Shoku Tensei Season 2 was a huge disappointment, and that's coming from someone that thought Season 1 was almost perfect. I will say that I didn't hate the first half, or really the second half either. As a whole, I'd say I enjoyed the entire season, but most of that enjoyment came from how invested I was in the characters and the world, so it was mostly carried by the heavy lifting the first season had already done. Already in the first half of Season 2, I felt that there was definitely a slight decline. Not huge, but definitely noticeable and there was probably about like four major points that I really felt were lacking that I'm gonna go over the first one being the school Most of the season is spent in the school and focuses on a lot of the side characters and this is cool and all. Having it be more slice of life and whatnot some romance. I'm cool with that, but you know it still needs to be good. So much time is spent in the school and so little is gained from it. Before the second half came out, I thought it was going to be kind of like a slow burn. Like everything will sort of culminate at the end and there will be some crazy payoff. But after starting the second half, I quickly realized that this isn't the case. And again, I don't mind Slice of Life, but like, does anyone actually like any of these four characters? Was anything interesting done with them narratively? I don't really think so. There are so many side characters that just come and go and the writing is so weak for most of them. I don't get anything out of it and it really just feels like it's wasting my time, especially because we don't have a goal. There is nothing to do except be at the school. Everything just feels so aimless. Okay, I lied, there is a goal. We need to cure Rudeus's erectile dysfunction. <laughs> To be honest with you though, I don't dislike this goal. I think it's actually pretty good, especially considering the ending of the first season and the beginning of this season that I actually thought was pretty good. But efforts towards this goal does not exist. It seems like Rudius has all the time in the world trying to complete this goal, despite a more pressing matter looming in the background, but we'll talk about that later. Instead, we focus on the lame side characters, and a lot of times there isn't even a focus at all. Like things just happen for no no reason. Like there's this one episode where Sol, who is a goaded character by the way, invites Rudius to drink. Now we haven't seen this character in a while as they had gone their separate ways so I was curious as to what would happen. But immediately as they get to the bar and start drinking, one of Sol's friends shows up and is like, hey uh, we need your help. And Sol just leaves. What? Like, why? What was the point of that? This is also the last time we see Sol, so it's not even like he had to go do something important. He just left. Now, the point is that Rudius is supposed to meet Sylphie outside the bar on the street. But, like, couldn't he have just gone there with, like, someone else? Or couldn't he have gone to this place because of any other reason? The writing just feels so much worse and less sharp than it did. And again, it really feels aimless. But even when he completes his goal, there's still a bunch of episodes of him just being at the school, not worrying about a thing. And this is where the issue was the most apparent, because literally nothing is driving the story. Also, we gotta talk about the world building in this season, because it sucks ass. <laughs> I fell in love with the world in season 1. Rudeus' homeland was always beautifully depicted, the demon continent has such a distinct style with a very clear look into the type of people that live there. Whenever they traveled around, the locations they visited felt alive. The magic school was something Rudeus got told about at the beginning of the story, and I could only imagine how cool that place would be. So when we finally go there in season 2, what do we get? <laughs> The magic school is the most useless ass place to ever exist. Across the like 15 episodes we're there, Rudius learns absolutely nothing from the school. Like we basically never see him attend class, so what's the point in even coming here? The only people who can teach him things are the characters we've met before that just recently came to the schools themselves. Like I couldn't tell you a single teacher that actually worked here. And the place is just so bland and uninspired with a lot of like weird strange and boring people like this is really the magic school we wanted to go to since childhood i'd ask for a refund to be honest there is these two characters but they are the most boring uninteresting characters ever they at least have their distinct personalities but they never get any character development and also just like 
never do anything. And I can say that for most of the side characters, despite so much time being dedicated to them, they just don't do anything. Sanaba buys a slave girl, teaches her English, and that's it. They at least try to do something with some of them, like Elena Lise, who I think is a pretty solid character, and Nanahoshi, who I'd say generally thought had some cool development, but that's about it. And these are two characters that just recently got to the school. So once again, why are we even here? What was the point of Body Gadi? Genuinely, what did he contribute to the story? Once again, he was a character that showed up to the school after Rudius did. He wasn't there originally. Rujard, oh man, there's no way I'm saying that right. Rujard shows up just to leave. Why? Why do we go to this haunted house? Ooh, that is not even scary at all. And I know people are gonna try to excuse away all of this by saying that it's set up, but that doesn't mean anything. Like, setup still needs to be good and enjoyable. Of course, there is the main aspect of this first half, which is the romance. And honestly, I thought it was fine. Again, I don't mind romance. In fact, I kind of like romance. And a lot of stories where romance isn't the main focus, but just like a side plot, I'll be so invested in it that I'll be like, damn, why can't we just get like a pure romance, like slice of life story about this couple? Now, in this case, I would have preferred if it didn't happen. And I think that mostly has to do with Sylphie. I'm just not a huge fan of her. She's not a bad character and League's more interesting than some of the side characters I mentioned before. But I wouldn't say she was all that, at least not enough for the whole Whole story to revolve around her. It's honestly a shame because this is probably the best part of the school section. After Rudius finds out Sophie's identity and we just get full on romance, I guess I enjoyed it less. This is more of a personal issue, I guess, but Sophie just didn't do it for me too much. The chemistry between them didn't really feel too natural, I guess. I don't know, doesn't matter. I didn't think it was too bad, although some scenes did make me feel a bit uncomfortable. I'm still not quite sure what to think about the fact that this dude is like 40 plus years or something, but I I've had enough talking about this part, so let's get to the real meat and potatoes, the labyrinth part. Now, I don't think the journey there is particularly interesting, but I guess that's the point, as it kind of makes the journey seem a lot faster considering they use the portal. Although one thing I thought was very strange that is probably foreshadowing something that will happen in the future. I mean, if it doesn't, that will be very weird. And that is that there was like a slight time lag when you entered the portal, but like a very small lag, like, three minutes or something. It never got explained or expanded on, so I'm just gonna assume that this will be revealed later. And once we get to the city, we finally reunite with the best character in the entire show, Geese. This guy is just perfect. I love him so much. It's actually a crime that he wasn't in more of the story before this. Now, this arc has the one major flaw that plagues it, and that is that it doesn't properly pay off setup. There are two major things that have been set up thus far in the story that have been heavily foreshadowed and made the audience eagerly wait for. The first is Roxy, and the second is Rudius' mom, trapped somewhere. Let's start with Roxy. Rudius and Roxy have not seen each other since episode 2 of the first season, and 10 plus in-universe years. They were only together for two episodes, but she still left such a big impact on both Rudius and the audience. Since leaving her, it has been foreshadowed so heavily that Rudius will meet her again one day. They just barely missed each other in the demon continent. When this happened, I'm sure we were all frustrated that they didn't meet. I was also frustrated, but I was also happy because I thought this meant that they had something crazy planned for us in the future, and once they did meet again, it would be incredibly special and a satisfying moment. But I was wrong. Rudius goes into the labyrinth, is there for like a few seconds, and then he's like, oh wait, she's in there. Then goes through the wall and saves her. Roxy doesn't even recognize him. Then it cuts to some minutes into the future where they've talked a little bit off screen and cleared up the fact that she does in fact remember him. But why did this need to happen now? I'm happy to see Roxy again. I wanted them to reunite, but not like this. There is nothing significant about this moment. Mentally, they're essentially the same character they were before. None of them have gone through any major changes. What was the point of so painstakingly keeping them separated for so long just to reunite them now? Why couldn't this have happened earlier? The show hasn't made an 
an effort to separate Rudeus from anyone else. He reunites with Rugerd and Sol just fine, so why was Roxy any different? If he met Eris again at the beginning of the season, wouldn't that kind of invalidate the ending of season 1? There's a reason these two characters have been separated for so long. Rudeus is now married and has a different girl, even a kid on the way. He's not the same as he was, I can only imagine how much Eris has changed. When they meet again, it will basically be impossible for all that setup not to pay off. Especially because it seemed like there was a plan here, and was kind of what was motivating me to get through all of the episodes before. The most I can give the scene is that it looked pretty, I guess. I love the colors, and generally the animation was pretty good throughout the whole season. Although for some reason it was a bit worse than season 1, which is a bit weird considering how popular it was. But I'm not really here to complain about that, because this is more than good enough for me. The colors were also pretty good for the most part, so I'm satisfied. Now the second part I thought was lacking in terms of payoff is the whole labyrinth itself. Just like the school, this place just kind of fell flat. Because we weren't told or shown where Rudius' mom was, my imagination had kind of stepped in. So when we actually got to see the labyrinth, I was kind of disappointed. I don't think hiding this place from us for so long was a great idea when the whole thing just lasts so short. It takes like three episodes and it wasn't anything particularly special about it. There was just some monsters in normal looking dungeons. And it was also pretty disappointing how there wasn't an antagonist. The closest thing we get is this dragon who doesn't talk. We move through this dungeon pretty easily defeating enemies with characters that Ryus hasn't been much around recently and also just haven't gotten too much screen time or character development in a while. Like why is Talhan even with them? I barely know anything about him and he doesn't really do anything noteworthy in the labyrinth. So the big mystery of where his mom was is finally revealed and she was just stuck in some ice in some random cave for some reason. I guess that's just where she got teleported. Now the ending of this dragon fight and the two episodes after it is where I think the biggest things to talk about really happened and uh, I'm a bit mixed on them. <laughs> Despite my issues with the story so far and my disappointment with the labyrinth, I can at least try to give praises to this fight where I think it deserves it. The animation is goddamn insane. This shit actually looked so fucking fire. The fight also just felt like it really had stakes, and I'm not talking about Paul dying. When they were actually fighting, it really felt like any mistake can cost them a life, and I really enjoyed that. It gave weight to every action and every attack that was done, and made me properly invested in it. Now, the end of this fight and the two episodes after it is like I said where I have mixed opinions. I think having Paul die was a good way to make up for the lack of antagonist and the dungeon and how easy the dungeon had been so far. It was a really sad moment that I thought was pretty good. However, after thinking about it a little bit, I kind of realized that that's all this moment has going for it. That it's sad because a character died. Now I do believe there is a message that was tried to communicate to us by Paul dying and Senif essentially getting Koskud. And at first I got really on board with you shouldn't take people for granted, especially not your parents, because one day they will die, and it might happen earlier than you expect. I thought this kind of made up for all the time Rudius wasted in the earlier episodes at the school. In a weird way, it kind of gave them a greater purpose. This was my thought process for about 5 minutes. I realized that while I do think this is a nice message, it really just doesn't make any sense in the context of the story. Because Rudius originally wanted to go help his parents, like even before he got to the school, he wanted to go to Begaritz to save Zenith. But God himself literally told him no. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if God pulled up on me and told me not to do something, I'm not doing it. And I'm not even religious. Rudius even defied God at the end because he wanted to save them so badly, but Paul still died. If he had gone earlier than what he did when he was weaker, more people might have died. They could have all died. And if he didn't go when he did, Roxy would have died. Like, Rudius literally saves her last second. Like, if he had decided to leave a minute later, she would have died. What happened was not Rudius' fault at all. In fact, I say he got the best possible outcome. So the message about not taking your parents for granted doesn't really make sense as he didn't really do that aside from some dialogue. The message ends up being more something like 
uh, always trust the shady god that shows up in your mind and do what he says because uh, but that also wouldn't have made any sense because had Rudius listened to him 100% Roxy would have died. I really actually liked the concept of the man god earlier like I thought the dilemma between choosing to do what he says or not was kind of cool but this is a way to just completely fumble that whole concept like the man god's advice literally would have caused Roxy to die. Had he really wanted to help surely he could have said like oh uh go get Roxy and then just go straight back and get stronger because you're not gonna win. Or he could have said like hey just take Bali Gadi. You remember that character who was like insanely strong? Just get his help and you'll be fine. And right after this stuff happens, he just kind of moves on to romance instead. Like basically no time is spent on mourning. He basically just gives up on Senef and gives her to Lilia and tries to start his own harem. Like what the hell happened to the message? And the romance itself is... Oh man, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I love drama. I feed off of drama. It gives me so much excitement. So when this happened, my jaw legit hit the floor. I did not expect it at all and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It might also have something to do with the fact that I don't like Sophie too much and that Roxy has been best girl from day one but anyway I did however say that I had mixed feelings and that is the case for this too because Roxy comes off like an absolute piece of garbage. She admits to seducing Rudius for selfish reasons even though this man just lost both his parents and his hand. Like bitch are you for real? It's also just the most pdf file thing I have ever seen. Like the last time you saw this dude he was like 5 years old. And the first thing you do when you see him again is rail him? Like what? Certified lover boy, certified pedophiles. Wah, 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 wah. I mean honestly I guess that makes them perfect for each other. Trying to strike a chord and it's probably a minor. And you know, as much as I always wanted Rudius and Roxy to end up with each other eventually, this was not an enjoyable way for it to happen. Roxy said that she fell in love with him on first sight, and a very short time later, she's his wife. Like, the romance doesn't get to build naturally, it just happens instantly which is weird because the two last romances really took their time and built up chemistry between the characters throughout like whole seasons it made them finally getting together at the end feel rewarding like i've said i don't really like selfie but at least that romance plot line was built up in a natural way and again the age thing makes this so much weirder and now we need to talk about arguably the most important part of the entire season the final episode and it's an absolute clown show This episode single-handedly wrecks and destroys everything. I was already pretty disappointed by this season, but this actually just takes it to a different level. In the episode before, we got this really like cringe speech from Elena Lise talking about like, oh, uh, it's okay to have multiple wives and stuff. Like, no disrespect, but coming from you, this really does not mean anything. Like, she's actually the worst person to ever deliver this message. Like, it's actually just cringe. I feel like I'm watching the Andrew Tate origin story or some shit like that. And then we actually get to the final episode, and we return to Sylphie. Now, I'm thinking Sylphie is not gonna be okay with this. Rudius literally told her, I'm going to be faithful. Sylphie literally said, you have to be faithful. This bitch immediately accepts it. It's not even like she forgives him, she is more than okay with it. Like she wants this to happen, are you serious? I already didn't like this bitch, but now I actually just despise her. I remember a time in this series where this type of behavior was shunned, but it genuinely feels like I'm watching a different show at this point. And if Sylphie tries to like bring this up and say that like, oh, Paul had two wives and stuff, but that is just like not even true. In the anime, they were never husband and wife. I know that that part got cut from the light novel and we're gonna talk about cut content soon, but this just like doesn't make any sense. And worst of all, there is no regret. What on earth was the man god smoking? There was literally nothing for Rudius to regret at all. He got the best possible outcome. The only bad thing that happened was that Paul died, but Rudius even says himself that that wasn't regret, that was just sad. So what is the lesson that's supposed to be learned? Rudius has some dialogue at the end that kind of hints towards the message being something about not having regrets, but how is that supposed to be the lesson 
or the message when he just didn't have any regrets the entire season. If you want a character to learn to not have regrets, then maybe give him some regrets so he can learn from that mistake. Rudius does what he wants and get what he wants with no consequences. I don't get mad when you waste my time with side characters because at least then I'm not even really invested in them and you know, I don't care what you do with them. But I get mad when you completely assassinate the main characters and characters that I'm really invested in and just destroy the story. How on earth did we go from this to this? How was the second half of this season worse than the first one? This final episode completely destroys these three characters for me. Now I have seen that some things were changed and cut from the Blight novel. I have looked at the changes and you know it really does suck that they did that. However, I think even if that wasn't cut, even if stuff wasn't changed, I don't think it would matter. This part is genuinely unsalvageable. Did I say at the beginning that I enjoyed this season? Because fuck that, I absolutely hated this. I don't even know if I can like bring myself to watch the next season. It's been a while since I've been this disappointed by something I was highly anticipating. So if you want to see more of that same disappointment, make sure to check out this video right here.